In this video, we're going to be going over several tips in New World to hopefully enhance your gameplay, make it a little bit more enjoyable. If you are a new or returning player to the game, I highly recommend you watch the video for some tips that may help you greatly. If you're someone who has a lot of hours in the game or a veteran player of New World, a lot of these things you may already know, but there may be a few things in here that you don't know or it could serve as a refresher. So feel free to stick around and watch the video as well. The first tip we have here is recipe pinning. This can make your life a whole lot easier whenever you're trying to craft specific items. Whenever you walk up to one of the crafting stations and you choose an item, for example, if we're trying to craft an orichalcum rapier, we can look here and see which items we need. So for this one, we'd be trying to craft a 595 to 600 gear score item. We're going to select Asmodium. We're going to select Glittering Ebony. And then we are going to select some Runic Leather. Once you have the required material selected you can then select pin recipe what this is going to do is add a hammer icon to all of these materials you're going to be able to see that hammer icon whenever you look in your inventory or in your storage but then you can take this a step further you can press j and you can click on recipes after you click on recipes you can click the pin option and what this is going to do is it's going to pin it right here for you in the top right hand corner of your screen you can see here that now we need 10 Asmodium, we need two Glittering Ebony, and we need one Runic Leather. And then whenever you walk up to your inventory or your storage or look in your inventory or your storage, you're going to be able to see that hammer icon. For example, if we take a look at Cutlass Keys, we can see here our Asmodium has the hammer icon, meaning that is a part of that recipe. So we can grab out 10, 2, and 1 of the required materials and then go craft it. This will work for any recipe in the game and can definitely make your crafting experience a lot more convenient. The next tip we have is related to cooldowns. So for example, whenever you use an ability, like say I use social distancing here, the cooldown shows up on your ability bar, but you can also have it show up in the middle of your screen just like this. You can see the little radio menu counting down. This is very helpful whenever you're in combat. It's much easier to see than looking down here at this one. So the way you activate this, you press escape, you go into settings, you go into game, and and then you come down here and you find the option that says show extra ability cooldowns make sure you turn that on and then you're going to have the extra cooldown there in the middle as you can see whenever we use an ability the extra ability cooldown pops up this can come in very handy i have that question a lot on stream so i wanted to make sure to include that in this video as well the next tip we have is regarding crafting so i've seen people make this mistake a lot and i just wanted to clarify something for you guys whenever you look in your bio and you own a home in a specific area you get a crafting buff so for example we have the arcanist wisdom right here or a better one would be the weaponsmith's temperament so weaponsmith's temperament what this will allow you to do is then this buff stacked on top of other buffs that you need will allow you to craft 595 to 600 gear what i see a lot of people doing is that they think because this buff is in brimstone sands i own a home in brimstone sands they have this buff, buff active a lot of people think you have to be in that settlement in order to utilize that buff you do not you can be anywhere in Eternum that has another tier five station. You can use this Weaponsmith's Temperament buff. It is a global buff. It's not only applied to that one location. I do see a lot of people making that mistake. Some people get confused. They think they need to be in that particular settlement that has that buff active. You do not. It is a global buff. You can craft anywhere whenever you have that buff. The next tip is relating to inventory management. Inventory and management in New World can be quite the pain because you can't just click and drag items into your inventory. So it can take quite a while to find certain items within your inventory or your storage. There are a few sorting options for you though. And I just want to make new players aware that this is available because whenever I was new, I overlooked these quite a lot because they are just kind of up here in the top right corner but you can sort by time you can sort by weight this will allow you to find heavy light medium gear a lot easier your jewelry is always going to be at the bottom so that helps a lot whenever you're looking for specific gear and then you can sort by gear score so if you're looking for a particular item that you bumped up to 625 amongst the pile of other stuff that you're looking for you can sort by gear score that'll make that a whole lot easier and you can sort by tier from high to low so tier five tier four tier three and so on you get the picture but these sorting options are available to you this will make your life a lot easier if you utilize them in a manner that makes sense whenever you're looking for specific gear this is something i overlooked for a very long time i didn't even use this feature for a while but i highly recommend using it because the inventory sorting in new world is pretty bad at the moment so finding items can be a super big pain but this option is available to you next we have a tip about swapping gems this is something that i never see anyone utilize in the game and a lot of people don't even know this is an option i overlooked this for a very long time myself but this will make your life a whole lot easier especially when you have a ton of gear in your inventory 
gear sets make this a little bit easier and there's ways around this you can just equip the item you're wanting to slot a gym into if you can't find the piece of gear in your inventory but nonetheless i'm gonna make your life a whole lot easier right now for example if i had a piece of gear here so this heart of fire if i wanted to put a gym in there i would have to grab this gym i would have to scroll down find that item drop that gym in there that's why i see a lot of people doing well i'm here to tell you there's a much easier way you all you have to do is find that item you click on it and there is an option to attach gym you click on attach gym it brings up the attach gym menu and then you can select whatever gym you want to put in there now bear in mind you do have to have these gyms in your inventory in order to make that work but just put the gyms in your inventory you want if you're trying to apply gyms to a lot of different gear and you have a lot of gear in your inventory just click on it go to attach gym and then you can slot whichever gym you want it makes things so much easier it is way easier than clicking a gym and then dragging it down and then trying to figure out which one of these items you needed to slot the gym into this next tip is related to pve combat this is how you know in new world if you have aggro of a mob this is especially helpful in expeditions whenever you think the tank might have lost aggro but he may not have lost aggro sometimes there are specific mobs that will just do a random attack on a player and the tank didn't actually lose aggro it's just part of the mechanics so a way to know whether or not you actually have the aggro or not is like this right now you see that this mob right here just has a white name with a white outline around its health bar Whenever I go up here and I draw aggro, you can clearly see the red outline, the bold red around the health bar. Now that's how you know that you have aggro. So if we were to leash this mob and run off and try to get him to de-aggro, he will go back to the normal health bar. That is how you know for sure that you have aggro. So for example, this bronze root soldier right here, we do not have aggro. We attack him. Now we have aggro of the soldier. That is how you know. In an expedition, this is very important to know. You need to know whether or not you have aggro of the mob or your tank does. So right there, you can see again, it clearly changes to that bold red outline whenever you draw aggro of the mob. This next tip is a great way for newer players or fresh level 60s to start earning a little bit of gold every day. As you can see here, I'm closing a major corrupted breach. It was a lower level breach, a level 35 one. And once we finish completing this breach, we're gonna be rewarded with a cash from completing the breach. Inside of that cache, there is going to be a bag of gold. That bag of gold is going to contain 250 gold. And you are guaranteed to get this bag of gold twice a day if you do major corrupted breaches. This lost sack of coin, again, it has 250 gold in it. So in order to do this, you just need to find a lower level major corrupted breach. For example, here's one that's level 35. If you go and do this, it is a guaranteed bag of gold the lesser breaches or the common breaches whatever you want to call them they have a 10 percent chance to drop the bag of gold and then elite chests have a 35 percent chance to drop the bag of gold so if you're going to go on an elite chest run or world tour you wouldn't really need to come clear these for the bag of gold you would just need to go do the world tour but if you are someone who is just playing solo or there's no world tours and you need a little bit of extra gold this is a great way to get it two guaranteed bags and easy 500 gold a day next tip is related to combat i think by default in order to swap between your primary and secondary weapons i believe the keybind is one and two well, there's a much easier way to quickly swap between your weapons. If you go to settings and then you go to key bindings, you can change weapon one and two to be nothing. And then you just change swap weapon to be whatever key you want. My MP9 is on my mouse. So I have a really quick and easy swap between weapons. I press one button and that same button swaps my weapons. This makes things a whole lot easier. And it is a much better way, in my opinion, to swap your weapons and a much more efficient way to do it in combat. Another question I get asked a whole lot is how I'm salvaging items so fast on stream. A lot of people think you have to click on the item and then click salvage. Well, right here, it shows you exactly what the hotkey is. All you need to do is press your control key, hold down C, and then it turns to quick salvage as you can see there on the screen. Control will split a stack, then you press C, it turns to quick salvage, and then you just simply click on the item and it will salvage it for you very quickly. There is no need to click and then go to salvage. This way, if you have a whole lot of items that are junk in your inventory, you can just quickly go through and salvage them without the pain of clicking on every single item and then scrolling down to that salvage option. Next, we have a tip about running faster on roads. As you can see here, we are on a road and we have a haste option. Your sprint speed is increased by 15% while sprinting on 
and roads. If you dodge roll or if you use an ability, for example, that will go away as you've seen on my screen there. Now we have it back. We use an ability, it goes away. So as long as you are just running on the road and not doing any other actions, you will get the increased speed. This is very good from traveling from point A to B whenever you're doing faction missions, for example, or performing other tasks in the game that require you to run. Just get on the road, don't perform any actions, and you will get a pretty nice speed boost. If you're looking for something on the trading post and you're having a hard time finding it, don't worry. There have been some really great filtering options added to the game since launch. You can click this filtering icon right here there's a lot of different options within these filters like for example can you equip it can you afford it a price range gear score minimum and maximum attributes and then perks and gems so if we were looking for an item that's 590 plus say we're looking for an item that had corrupted bane and then we wanted a spear that had corrupted bane and enfeebling skewer on it we select that and then we hit apply if we hit apply here we're going to get items that have corrupted bane and enfeebling skewer so anything that has corrupted bane and anything that has enfeebling skewer for example so this hatchet you can see here does not have enfeebling skewer because it's a hatchet it's only corrupted bane that's why these pop up in your filter because it's looking for both but if you're looking for those items specifically Corrupted Bane and Enfeebling Skewer, and only that perk combination. You can click Add Perk. You can go to Only Selected Perks. Then you can hit Apply, and this will bring up items with only that selected combination. So now you can see it makes a little more sense. We have a Spear with Enfeebling Skewer. So this has Enfeebling Skewer and Corrupted Bane on here which makes it much, much easier to find your items. Just remember, whenever you are filtering, the perk selection in this top left will allow you to add only selected perks or any selected perks. There's a big difference between the two. This will help you find gear in New World a whole lot easier. Now we're gonna talk about upgrading items in New World. There are new players that come in that are confused about which items will upgrade to Legendary and which will not. For example, we have an Empyrean Kite Shield of the Soldier here that's 596. If we were to use Umbral Shards on this and upgrade it to Gear Score 600, it is not going to become Legendary and get a third perk. Same thing with this old Ring of the Fighter. If we were to upgrade this, and I will just do it for the sake of the video, we're gonna upgrade this to 600 you will see that it is not going to upgrade to legendary. It stays purple. There are only certain items in the game that you can upgrade from 590 to 600 that will in fact turn legendary and give you a third perk. Those items come out of outpost rush crates, like a rusher piece of gear, for example. Those items will give you a third perk. Also items from war caches and invasion caches will do the same thing. So if we take a look at this one here, we can upgrade this one with umbral shards from 594 to 600 and it will give us a third perk. So now we have a Focus Freedom Critical Retribution Resilient Helmet. We received this helmet and upgraded it because you're able to do that with Outpost Rush Gear, War Gear, and Invasion Gear. Any other gear in the game, if you upgrade it, you're just gonna be wasting Umbrals. If you're trying to upgrade it to Legendary, it's not gonna happen. It's only going to increase the power. It's not going to give you a third perk. We talked a little bit earlier in the video about how to quick salvage items. Well, you can use quick salvage in another very valuable way. You can see here that my Azoth is 479 of 1000. I have a stack of 50 Azoth here. In order to maximize my Azoth or max out my Azoth again, all I need to do is quick salvage this stack and it will automatically use the desired number of Azoth and then it will max out my Azoth. So for example, whenever we quick salvage, it used 10, it maxed out my Azoth. It knows exactly how many vials to use. It's not going to use the whole stack and you don't have to use them one by one. Just quick salvage your stack of Azoth, it'll put you at cap. The last tip I have for you guys is to utilize the unstuck command. If you don't know, there is a slash unstuck command in New World. So if you get stuck in a rock or somewhere weird, you can slash unstuck and then you will be teleported to a different location. However, you can also use this command for your convenience. So if you're trying to get to a hard spot, for example, like I'm trying to drop right down there to that nest, if I accidentally miss and I go all the way down here, I would then have to run all the way back around and waste my time running in order to get back up there. Well, there is an easier way. 
You can just use the unstuck command. It's going to take a little bit to fast travel to the location. But after you use the unstuck command, it's going to pop you right back up to the top of the cliff. So then I can walk right back over here and have a second shot at getting down there. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that if I do this again and I miss and I fall all the way back down once again and I try to use the unstuck command again, there is a cooldown. So you can't just spam it. So you'd be better off just running back around at that point. But utilize the unstuck command. It'll save you a lot of headache in some very uh, painful situations. But that'll do it for this one, boys and girls. I hope some of those tips helped you if you're a new or returning player. And if you're someone that's been playing for a while, hopefully you got a little bit out of that as well. But that'll do it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you being here. If you enjoy New World or enjoy New World content, please make sure to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that as well. And as always, we stream 8 o'clock a.m. CST every Monday through Friday over at twitch.tv slash BDLG. I'd love to see you come over there and hang out for a little while. We have a great time. That'll do it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.